what makes this movie so special is those large set pieces like the classrooms the the great hall the costumes like hogwarts like dude like i yeah. i don't know if you can see that right behind me but i've got that little image from the first movie up there you see oh that? yeah yeah that's like things yeah, that yeah, get engraved, yeah, yeah, do. yeah that gets engraved into your head like when you're a child watching this movie for the first time yeah now i'm just really fascinated as someone who worked on the movie do you get the same feeling or the same magic when you first walk on these set pieces the same way as a viewer does when they watch it? I think um, I can only speak for myself, but for me, I did, especially on Potter, because because I loved the books and I read the books and I, I, I loved the source material so much. But I think one of the wonderful things that they managed to do on Potter, and it is entirely uh, to be credited to Stuart Craig, the production designer, is somehow, and I don't know how they did it, and it's something between Stuart Craig's designs and the original source material, that it's so vivid and somehow it fits exactly with what I'd say 95% of people imagined Hogwarts to look like. Like, you don't go into Hogwarts and you, you, I don't remember any of us going into a set and going, oh, that's not. That's cool, but that's not what I imagined. Yeah, like yeah, you walk sure. onto the Great Hall set and you go, this is exactly, exactly how I imagined it to look in my head. And I mean, I, I can't, I don't know what it's like watching the film. I, and it's hard, probably hard for a lot of people now to say what it's like watching the film for the first time and going, that's what I imagined Hogwarts to look like because yeah. everybody's so familiar with it. And it is so everywhere these days. But, um, but yeah, I remember like seeing the burrow for the first time or I mean, any of those sets, they all, they would just, you could, you could just look down the row of people going onto the set for the first time and everybody was going, nailed it. Yeah. This is exactly <laughs> what I saw in my brain when I was reading the books. And I don't know how you do, I don't know how you tick that box so precisely in everybody's brain. Um, but it did. They're just, they're stunning. And they were so well thought out and well created and well crafted mm -hmm. that you like you really did feel like you were in those rooms you know i mean anybody who's seen any sort of behind the scenes stuff of leaves and studios will know that at the time it was an absolute dump <laughs> you know it was a <laughs> derelict it was a derelict air airfield hangar aircraft engine factory kind of Jeez. it'd been used for loads of things there was this old runway that we used to park all the cars on and then we we're basically in old warehouses and old aircraft hangars for the most part so the roofs were leaky it was rusty it was cold but inside there they'd created these amazing spaces like you know like the great hall and you walked you walked through these sort of dark dingy places that you know were past their prime by a long way and you'd open this wooden door and suddenly you'd be in this transport magical, into this magical great world, hall right? and it was yeah yeah and you would complete and like and, and i mean i know i'm not the only person to say it but you would you could open the drawers and everything you would expect to find in a drawer that you will never see ever in the films the drawers you know everything you could ever possibly want to make it feel real was there you know you'd, in the burrow for instance you'd open one of the drawers in the kitchen and it would have odd sets of knives and forks that didn't really match but were like perfect they were exactly what the wheezes would have had you never see them nobody ever opens the drawers but they're there and that's mm. what makes it so incredible and so special mm.